Welcome to CityWise. I'm your host, Tiana Stevens. CityWise is produced by the City of Rochester to shine a spotlight on city living at its best. If you've been to a recreation center in the city lately, you might have noticed something new. All of the sites are now called R Centers, but the R goes beyond just recreation. Marisol Ramos Lopez, Commissioner of the Department of Recreation and Youth Services, and Bill Schwapaker, Marketing Coordinator, are here to explain. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for Thank having you. us. So what does the R stand for in, uh, in R centers besides just recreation? Well, the R stands for responsibility, relationships, respect, and all of the words that really symbolize the work that we're trying to do and instill in our youth. How did this change come about? Well, one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we did is get out of the mode of just thinking about recreation when it came to the um, recreation centers. And mm -hmm. that's where we started coming up with other words, like Madisol just said, where, you know, we, 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 we are all about getting people ready for school and, you know, with and relationships and things like that. And we thought we need to go beyond, you know, just the word recreation. Mm -hmm. The other element is really the role that our staff and youth and families play in the community. And that's where responsibility comes in. Mm -hmm. We are all responsible for what happens in our community. And we want to show our youth that that work begins in our center. Okay. And how do you respond to the needs of the community that, you know, changes? How do you react as director? Right now we're engaged in a strategic planning session that focuses on citizen input. We want to make sure that the services that we're providing are in line with what the community expectations are. We focus on after school and athletics. We focus on arts and creativity and we focus on responsibility and, and civic commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we want to make sure that those services are there and that we're meeting the needs of the community. The other element that we're looking at is what's happening in our facilities during the day. So we're not open during the day normally because kids are in school. Mm -hmm. What is it that we can do to provide services in the community to offer intergenerational programs, bring our seniors in for okay. exercise or arts programming, uh, and how that works out to best serve our community. That's wonderful. And Bill, you brought with you the, the fall program guide, the beautiful, uh, beautifully put together. Tell us about some of the programs this fall. Well, I mean, we, like Madison said, most of our children's programming happens after school. Mm -hmm. um, so kids, when they're done with school, can go to one of our, our centers and enjoy, um, you know, a lot of recreational activities, but also we have a lot of programs that are geared towards, um, you know, learning. So it's more of an extended learning experience as well. Mm -hmm. We also have a program that we've had for several years now called After School in the Park, which is one of our camps. My son goes to it. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful thing. And Where's that held at? It's at uh, the Lake Riley Lodge in Cobbs Hill Park. Okay. Uh, right off of 490. And, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of emblematic of what what parents and children can find at our, our centers where, you know, there's arts and crafts, there's sports, there's music, there's dance, there's, you know, a, a wide variety of things for kids to stay engaged after school. What are the requirements for the, the after school in the park camp? Is there an age limit for that? Yes, we cater to 6 to 14, okay. um, but it's, uh, we, we, we keep it generally in that, in that area, yes. Okay. And After School in the Park is one of our fee-based initiatives, so that program is $55 a week. Mm -hmm. At our R Center sites, um, most of our services are free, and that really goes to our slogan, you are already a member, mm -hmm. because as a city resident, you're entitled to utilize our facilities for all programming. We believe that after school programming is very important for the extended learning component, but also to work with youth in reading and working in the summer to stem summer learning loss. Mm -hmm. And along with the name change, there's been some upgrades to some of the facilities, cosmetic mm -hmm. and um, some playground updates too. Do you want to tell us about that? Well, we've had a couple of new playgrounds installed, and last week we did the ribbon cutting for two of those, one being at Avenue D. <coughs> the other element that we're working on is a facelift to some of our facilities. Mm -hmm. Paint can do so much, and we're brightening sure. up all of our centers with bright, beautiful colors. What's the feedback been from um, people, from families, kids so far? Well, people are very excited. Part of this rebranding included focus groups with our youth and parents. 
parental involvement is critical in the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. We have children who are at our centers every day, including Saturdays, and so communication with parents is very important. So when it came to renaming the center and picking the, the, the slogan and the logo for it, it was great involvement from our youth. They're very excited, they love the colors, and they love what the new centers are looking like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the great things about this rebranding is yes, it did come somewhat from the top down, but our kids were involved right from the beginning when it came to coming up with slogans and talking about what was important to them and they really helped shape you know the our center's brand the other element of rebranding is our team and how our team feels about the work that they're doing their mm -hmm. role in it and we had some rebranding uh, seminars with the ad council where we came up with a brand promise that was created by our staff the role that our staff plays within the community in, in partaking with after school care of our children is incredible. They really have one of the most important jobs in the city. How does the staff um, receive ongoing training as, as things change, as new programs are added? Well, we have a training initiative that is implemented, and so every year we have a schedule that we go through. They learn CPR and first aid, handling proper handling of food. Uh, if people don't know, our, our centers serve dinner every single day mm -hmm. to our participants, and so we work in collaboration with Foodlink to do that. They're also trained on new initiatives, safety, and now that we're looking at the issue of obesity, they're also trained on those elements as well. Okay. And that's how we, we the brand goes beyond just the look and feel. It goes beyond the logo. It goes mm -hmm. beyond colors and whatnot. It's kind of a mantra for us. So when we are, when our staff is uh, talking with a parent or dealing with kids, there are certain standards that go along with that brand promise that Metasol was talking about. Mm -hmm. And it really helps inform us and, and inform our staff on, you know, how we can create an environment that is great for our kids and safe and you know rewarding that is the best element of our of our rebranding and it is about establishing a trust with parents mm -hmm. because what they have to understand is when their children are, are at our centers they're safe doing productive activities they're exercising playing doing arts and crafts part of our rock music program or some of our other initiatives that is very productive for our youth and we want to make sure that parents are involved in that and one of the elements that we've created is fa Friday family fun nights okay where we have parents and children come in to enjoy game nights or baking or different activities that involve the whole family. Mm -hmm. And d Does programming differ from center to center? Do they all offer the same thing or does it depend on the neighborhood? Program differs from center to center and there is a strategy behind that. Everyone has a home base mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that youth from around the city get to see all of our centers and get to participate in different activities. So Edgerton our center for example is our arts base and a lot of our arts programming will come out of there. We have some sports sites that will focus on that and this year our Carter Art Center became our STEM location so we are looking at transporting youth from different parts of the city into different art centers to enjoy all of our offerings. Okay. But at the same time though there are differences in, in programming. Sure. Part of the idea behind branding all of the art centers together is to bring them under one umbrella so that when someone enters one art center they can expect a specific, you know, experience that they'll find at all the art centers, that mm -hmm. they'll be welcomed, that they'll, you know, be able to en engage in learning activities and a yeah. variety of different things. So it was really important for us to make sure that we, all of our centers work as a team and provide one great experience across okay. the board. How do you keep parents um, engaged? We're all so busy these days running around. How do you connect with parents specifically, grandparents? Well, we do it on a site-by-site -site basis. Our center staff and the center director communicate through flyers. We have different meetings for different activities. If they're engaged in athletics and organized athletics, parents are invited to come into meetings. We have parents who volunteer mm -hmm. and work with all youth in the center. And we're looking at increasing the involvement and participation for parents. So some of our sites have exercise programming for adults so their parents can exercise while their kids are on the computers or playing basketball or in the game room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you have lined up for winter break? Is there a camp that um, parents can send their well, kids after to? We already mentioned after school in the park and mm -hmm. after school in the park offers um, uh, care during okay. winter break. 
Um, if you're not a member of the, if you're not participating in after school in the park, though, can you all come of in our, our centers week? will have activities okay. in the winter? Something I haven't participated in, but May this year is snowshoeing, mm -hmm. oh. and so there are walks along the trails. We do different snow tubing activities, uh, lots of outside in the cold activities <laughs> to get you <laughs> excited, warmed well, we're up. We're in Rochester. Yeah, That's right. right. You gotta enjoy okay. it. Okay, you mentioned the STEM initiative. Can you? Um, explain what that is? Well actually this summer we had four free camps offered at five different centers. We had an arts explosion camp uh, we ha that was at Edgerton. We had two sports camp, one at Campbell our center and the other one at Avenue D, our center. We had the uh, Earth Explorers at Humboldt, our center, and the STEM camp at the Carter Street, our center, for which we won an award. The work with STEM is going to be increasing within our sites because we understand the importance of science, technology, engineering, and math mm -hmm. to further the education. We are actively involved in educating our youth. Okay, and finally, what's next for the R Center rebranding? Well, a variety of different things, and we're going to have a uh, real big market push with with um, you know new posters, no new uh, no new look all the mm -hmm. way around um, billboards. We hope um, you know, and just getting getting that message out there that you know when when people come into our centers, they can experience so much more than just you know recreation. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming in today. And you can find out what's happening at your neighborhood R Center by visiting cityofrochester.gov slash R Centers. And you can call 428-6755. Well, at any time of the year, the city's libraries are filled with people of all ages coming to explore literature and take advantage of the many free resources that each branch has to offer. Tease Jenkins brings us this week's At Your Service report. In addition to the wonderful books and the learning resources you find there, Rochester Public Libraries offer so much more. Patricia Utaro is here to tell us more about the library. Patricia, tell us what more in addition to those books and learning materials does the library offer? Well, probably what's most important for city residents is the access to technology that we provide. Uh, we've done a number of surveys over the last few years that have shown anywhere from 65 to 75 percent of the people who come into the library to use computers that's their only access to computers and the internet um, and and you need access to do uh, pretty much anything today if you want to apply for unemployment you have to do it online if you want to submit a resume or a job application you have to do it online and if you don't have internet and a computer at home you're kind of lost so we fill in the gap for city residents in that way for more information visit the city's website www.cityofrochester.gov And happening now in your city, a Rochester man is on a mission to make Rochester the healthiest city in America, and he's found a unique way to make exercise easy and accessible for all. Lee Lucky Davis is the founder of Easy Work Fitness and a certified personal trainer, and he's joined by Sharde Garcia, an Easy Work participant, to tell us more. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Um, Lee, how did this all get started? Um, my journey was, you know, Typical, I was out of shape, looking for answers, trying to get a better quality of life. And for me, it was just more so trying to get healthier and happier and mm -hmm. just have a better quality of life uh, as far as um, being able to do just basic things. Um, I found myself getting dizzy, just bending down to tie my shoes. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was real challenging for me. I was really out of shape. I was like 290. That was the heaviest I ever been okay. in my whole life. Um, so I just decided to make a change. and. It triggered just a, a chain reaction between everybody that was in my circle, okay. um, friends, family, everybody started coming together. We started working out regular, regularly and we are where we are today. It's just a, mm -hmm. it's a big movement. Um, I'm just blessed to be able to help and save my city and 
do this consistently and just make other people happy. How long ago was this and was there a specific event that caused you to have this realization or was it a kind of a combination of things? <laughs> well it was funny because it was Thanksgiving day um, I'm laying on the couch big blob just got to eat like three plates yeah. and my mom started my mom started like ragging on me oh my god look how big you are look at your legs how oh, you so chubby now and I'm just like well I'm not used to that and then it was just I looked in the mirror I picked my stomach up twice like yeah this is this is getting bad let me do something about this so that day me and my little brother we went outside went jogging went to the park started doing some pull-ups and mm -hmm. ever since then there was just a snowball effect so you started exercising outside in the park and other people kind of just joined in yeah um i know a couple guys in the city who were doing it as well um linked up with those guys for more motivation um, we pushed each other and just uh kept it going made a video people seen it had asking about it um we did organized workouts together and it just went from there. Mm -hmm. And Charde, um, how long have you been doing easy work? Um, since uh, July, the summer. Okay. So about what, four or five months? A couple now? months. How did yeah. you hear about it? Um, through social networks, the, um, Facebook, and actually I've always seen Lucky from when he used to come into my job at Wegmans, and um, he always used to tell me about the Easy Work um, Fitness and how he would have his own fitness group, and um, he had different promotions going on, but I never really um, looked into it much, and then I started seeing it a lot more on Facebook, and um, you know, uh, Mother's Day this past year, my mother, she seen me, and she looked at me and she was like, wow, you know, Sade, you're getting, you're putting on a lot of mm -hmm. weight. And um, it was from a lot of foods I was eating. I was always eating big portion foods. And now I'm just like, I love it. I'm into it. I'm motivated. I'm dedicated to it. And um, back then I was, what, nine, 198. And now I'm down to 170. So wow. it, it's just a good feeling. From back in high school, I was always between 150 to 160. Mm -hmm. So... I did put on a lot of weight, and um, I feel great about it. I feel lighter, feel healthier, and it's just not, you know, it's not a diet. It's mm -hmm. it's a lifestyle, and it feels great to be able to motivate younger people, older people, sure. kids to be able to come into uh, the community to actually do a great thing. You know, it's a great movement to be a part of. What was it like, the first, the first workout that you did? Was it, it was hard? challenging. <laughs> it was hard. Um, I felt like uh, I wanted to just give up. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to just actually go home and I was like, you know what, I can't do this. I, I'm just going to go home and I stuck it through and, you know, I was able to make it through the first one and as it gradually went on, it was, you know, it's progress. So, mm -hmm. um, it's always a process and as long as you, that, um, you know, keeping up with your portioning of your amounts of food that you intake, uh, five to six meals per day and actually, um, you know, keeping the amount of water that you should intake as far as, you know, it's your body weight divided by two and that's the amount you intake and um it, you know having your veggies having your starch having your fruits and um like i said portioning it out and mm -hmm. having great meals and um still doing the workout outside of not just having it at the community workout doing it at home doing, doing it at own. work sure. doing it at school wh however you feel you can do it you know 15 minutes here 15 minutes there you're going to get to where you want to mm -hmm. be so. so it sounds like education is a big part of this too so mm -hmm. you're giving them something more than just um, the exercise the weekly exercise yeah daily um, I put a fitness post I put up you know okay. just different health tips because you know um, you can come to the gym you can do jumping jacks with me all day squats but mm -hmm. if you're not if you're not applying it to your everyday life outside of seeing me then it's not really going to be effective it can mm -hmm. help but it's much more um, effective when you take um, take a stance and, and make it part of your, your everyday life you know just like you brush your teeth just like you wash your face you should be exercising and eating right mm -hmm. it's a necessity mm -hmm. and um, I try to educate people daily you know about um, who they are the greatness inside of them and then show them um, you know the potential that you have because mm -hmm. it's a lot of people who come to my program who really aren't athletic or, or thought they weren't athletic and then they get there and they're doing things that we're doing me and my mm -hmm. team we're doing and they're like wow i didn't know i can do that like yeah i knew it mm -hmm. you just okay, didn't see anyone it. participate anybody's um okay. can come you know young old male female nobody's um exempt i want everybody to come and get strong okay is um every workout the same and do the men do something different than the women um we do group workouts as everybody as a team we okay. also split them up i have the advanced students with the um 
the, um, the beginners and uh, we split them up and we have everybody do something different. I have different trainers for different groups, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes we like to bring it all together. That way everybody trains together. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like we have a group over here and it's a group over there and everybody's segregated. So we um, mix it up, give everybody different varieties. We do upper body, lower body, cardio, a lot of stretching, um, explosive movements. It depends on um, what I feel we're, we're lacking. So I want to make mm -hmm. sure everybody has a well-rounded um, understanding of fitness and health and how to move the body properly. Okay, well, Sharday, what does a typical workout um, look like for you? Um, typical, as far as when we are there, it's um, anywhere from jumping jacks to squats to lunges to um, um, any ab work. And it's just, it's, it's a great thing and um, you know, it's not the same, like he said, it's not the same thing every time we come there. We do mm -hmm. different things as one, as a whole, as everybody feels like they're family and they're welcome there. So it's just, it's a great thing for me, as opposed to when you go to a regular gym, mm -hmm. you know, all you find is somebody getting straight on the treadmill mm -hmm. and that's their whole workout. Or they just do, um, you know, lifting weights mm -hmm. and that's just what they're, you know, immune to and that's just what they like to do. As Like I said, when you go there, you find you have different people there different shapes different sizes we don't discriminate on that and we welcome everybody in there and Lee and his whole team they do a great job with that and I I, I love it I, I'm so happy to be a part of that movement I'm so proud that I did go in when I did because had and I went in you know July June whenever I had you know did go in I would have been probably 200 plus pounds right now mm -hmm. and you know I probably wouldn't be able to be encouraged to actually go out and actually want to work out because I see a lot of people that be like you know well I'm I'm just so overweight I don't feel comfortable I don't feel like I, sh I, I belong there but I always tell people it's not about you know how people look at you is just what you feel inside if you're going to do it for you at the end of the day and it's going to make you feel good mm -hmm. then go for it you know don't feel dis discouraged or don't feel like you need to be afraid of who you are and show it in that aspect because when I went in there I was always like you know that's how I felt in the beginning and you know as I tell them now I've been there and I've went through that phase and I love it you know now I'm to the point where I motivate other people I mm -hmm. push them and they love it they feel like oh Sade one day you can be an instructor and I tell them no you know I one day I possibly can and I would love to do that and pursue a career in that and um, like I said it's just me as a person I love to help people I love to encourage people and if I can motivate different people I think I brought in probably 20 plus people already oh, I lost great. count it, it's a great thing yeah. and um, I don't discourage anybody to you know want to come and try it out even if you come to watch it and then you feel like okay the next time I can go and actually try it out mm -hmm. you start at your own pace and gradually you're gonna work up to that to that pool of where you want to be and to be like okay right. I can do this every day right no problem so Lee you also are a personal trainer so you're inside a, a gym how does this differ um, the community workouts from you know just being inside of a gym is, is there a different feeling for you um, gym people you know a little bit different you know you got some extremists you got people who uh claim to know what they're doing but don't know how to do anything and then you have just the average person who's just trying to get in shape and they go about their day you know meticulously but um the community uh like a, it's a community thing mm -hmm. like you said um it's not a neighborhood it's a community thing it's like family so um it's very close knit even though it's a large group of people everybody's talking everybody's mm -hmm. pushing each other we're all feeding off of different energies um everything so uh intimate even though it's such a large right. group of people. How many so, people would you say come on a typical week? Uh, summertime, you know, there's no school, no uh, people get vacations and stuff like that. So we had anywhere between 150, 250 out wow. there. Um, wintertime, school, uh, college, mm -hmm. back on jobs, people picking up second, third jobs. So um, it's between 50 and 75 people right now, okay. which is still good numbers, you know, yes. for a consistent um, weekly workout. So we still mm -hmm. have good numbers. Um, we're still looking to add more people. Anybody can come, bring your kids, bring a stranger, mm -hmm. relative, anybody can work. Um, we have plenty of space at the Ryan Center, so. Okay, so down. now you've moved indoors now that it's colder outside? Yeah, we're indoors now. Okay. I don't want nobody getting sick. Um, we're trying to build you up. I ain't trying to break nobody down. Um, 
it's not real metic um you know vicious like that i'm not malicious i don't want you outside trying to work out in the snow doing push-ups it's not <laughs> nothing crazy um we want everybody happy and comfortable <laughs> okay happy and comfortable where do you see easy work five years from now um it can go a lot of different places i really just see us spreading to different cities um dvds uh different kind of fitness programs i already have a pro boxer so you know um advancing in that field as well um getting more athletes um more college athletes um professional athletes i think that would be something big but just making rochester the healthiest city in america that's our main goal everything else that comes along with that we'll accept it wonderful well thank you so much for coming in today Charde. thanks for sharing your story too yeah, thank you. again if you'd like to participate in these free community workouts easy work meets every tuesday night at 6 30 at the ryan r center that's on webster avenue thanks for joining us on this edition of citywise i'm tiana stevens and we'll see you next week